What's going on everybody? Welcome to DTM Design and my name is Dan. We're back with another build video. Today we're going back to Florida Swamp Fest from 2023 to recreate this Disney castle they had there that was burnt to the ground. We're bringing it back together in miniature form so enjoy the video and let's get right into it. All right everybody so starting off this build I do what I usually do and I print out a bunch of photos of the thing I'm about to build. So thankfully last year I went to this event for the first time ever so I was able to get a bunch of photos of this castle. But if you don't know what the event is, it's a crazy BMX event that happens almost every year, started by Trey Jones, and it gets crazy. Get that kid a life preserver. As you can see, this event gets crazier and crazier every year, and it gets larger, and the events and obstacles just get more outstanding. And the year I went, they built the Disney castle, and by the end of it, it all gets burned down, so it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience when you go to this event. Each year is different, each year is unique, so if you're not there, you miss out on whatever goes down, and you only get to see what's online in videos. But this year, we did it for 2024, we built the miniature castle, and let's get into a little more detail about what it went into doing that. Alright guys, so starting off this build, I pretty much just went and got some simple modeling wood from Hobby Lobby. It cost me about 50 bucks. Um, I wanted to make a 10x10 base here, so I used some MDF I have and some solid wood here to make a guardrail since I don't have a table saw or anything like that. So this is the best way for me to make a straight cut in my one bedroom apartment. Uh, worked pretty well. We got our two pieces of 10x10. Uh, I did that just to have a thicker piece of MDF, uh, a little less warpage and just a firmer base. Use some wood glue, spread it out, and some weight, uh, just kind of let that dry. Now matching the bases, uh, using this pink foam insulation to give us some level and kind of create some texture for the ground. We're going to use the foam cutter and carver to shape this and give it a little more of a look of like just a big chunk of ground. Uh, we will glue that down to the base eventually. But we go ahead and start making the frame of the actual castle. Uh, I kind of made a little square within the 10 by 10 square there to get an idea of, you know, what sizing I'm going to be doing. It's going to feel before I actually started building it. And just using some, you know, regular frameworking stuff, my little angle cutter here. And just slowly working along building this frame. Uh, I don't know have any idea what it looked like in the real one. So just trying to make this kind of strong and firm as a model. Definitely not any building techniques you'd use in real life for something like this, but for a model, it works. Uh, so now we're making the little transition ramps that are all around the entire castle. I'm um, kind of getting a feel for it, and I made a little factory line of them once I was happy, getting them all done, and then starting some of the panels here in that second top layer of the castle. Thankfully, this is a pretty simple structure to put together. Um, the fun part's going to come when we start weathering this thing up and doing the graffiti. We start making these little uh, columns or castle towers and wrapping those in some paper. It's kind of like a painting canvas paper that I used. And then using the balsa wood with its better bend ability, we use that to do the transition. Now I had to replicate uh, sort of the patterning they used from the photos just to match it, you know, trying to make a replica here. Uh, eventually we double layered it all and the whole thing was covered. And we have the top and the little top and we were ready to, you know, throw some base paint on this thing. And this is a nice clean white. Now that we have white painted throughout the entire model, we are going to go ahead and mix up some gray and paint the brick texture throughout the model. And this is just one of the last steps before we get ahead to weathering the model. Uh, one other step we'll have to do is paint the blue trim throughout the model and the top of the tower columns or the little tips of the castle. Now, while this blue paint dries and the gray bricks dry, we can't really put washes on them as they'll smear and it won't be the right effect. So we make this brown dirty wash and the deck where everyone's going to be walking during the event, we got to make all these panels a different color tone to sell the realism of the model. And then we're going to go ahead and also glue this down to the foam base before we do any of the ground or texture for the ground, which we're doing now. So spraying some wood glue using some dirt, some coffee ground, some salt, and some super glue that is watered down with acetone so it goes in all the cracks, seals it up real well and then painting with this latex, which is just a basic brown. Uh, if you go to Home Depot, they got a lot of sample paints for 50 cents. It's a great place to get that. 
Now, using my Cameo cutter here, uh, I'm using this to print out the logo of the Swamp Fest thing. I use that and set it up all on Illustrator and kind of, you know, use the pen tool off a of photo. Uh, and using some transfer tape, I just kind of put this up on the model and then make sure it sticks down well. And then using my paint marker, I'm gonna do the bottom with blue and then the top of black. <coughs> and then kind of use the black marker and fade down into the blue to get the gradient look we want. As you can see, there's the first little spot and then kind of just going back and thickening up areas that didn't look too well with just the stencil and then using a white marker to trace the outline just to match what they did in real life. Now pulling out an A and B resin epoxy, we're gonna use that to make a little lake or a little uh, part of the moat that was around the castle. Um, and using some acrylic sheet that I have here, we're gonna kind of block off this corner um, so we can pour the resin in there and pretty much act as mold walls. And yeah, and then using some clay to make sure none of the resin leaks out anywhere and hot glue to seal up everything. And then using part A and the other part B, which I had to cut open because the lid wouldn't come off. And just pouring those together, 50-50 mix, stir it up real well adding some ink to kind of just make it brown, dirty water, and simply pouring it in. While we're letting the resin cure, we start working on the runway that goes to the main entrance of the castle. Now using some of that thin wood that we used before, and then also some styrene plastic to represent the MDF wood, which is a thinner and smoother wood, and just to give a transition or difference between the material as you look at the model, so you know it's two different things. Now we get to go to the fun part of the graffiti, and just tagging it up using the paint markers and the airbrush. Now this is a super fun part of it, because you just get the tag. And, but I didn't have the best photos of all the tags, so I kind of had to guess and, you know, improvise on some of the tags. Now, pulling out some of the acrylic washes here, we're gonna make this plain, one-tone base look more alive and real. Uh, Cause you know, dirt isn't just one color when you go somewhere. It's a million different tones from a million different materials or whatever has been building up there over time. So just using some washes, making sure we get up on the model and on the ramp, using the pastel powders that we got and just going all over the place. Now I'm starting to get a lot of footage of the tagging in general, but I was really focused when I was doing that, so that's kind of why. But here, we're just making everything dusty. We're bringing it to life, making it look real. This is where the model comes to life and where we can represent the dirt and grime that is built up during the event. Uh, as people have been riding with their bikes, they've been throwing fireworks at it, whatever you can think of. So now with this model weathered up, it's looking realistic. Now we gotta clean it up a little bit and make it look like a piece of art. So what we're gonna do, I do a different thing every time I do my bases, but we wrap this one and fell around the entire edges to protect the foam and everything like that. And then using some nice hardwood, we made a 10 by 10 by 10 frame, some 45 angle cuts, and then a way to raise it up a little bit as the wood is thicker. And we got this model done. And I hope you guys enjoyed this build and this whole video. Check out these finishing shots and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you everyone who made it to the end of this video. I greatly appreciate you watching the builds. If you can leave a comment, like, or subscribe, and just let me know what you guys wanna see in future build videos or anything like that. You can also follow my Instagram, DTM underscore design, for more frequent updates of all my builds and everything I'm doing. So see you guys in the next one, and thank you for watching. Yeah, that's perfect. It looks so cute.